graduate students in the School Psychology program at UCO. Our video today is on social skills training for poor social interactions in youth. So first off, I'm going to talk about what are poor social skills. Poor social skills is more than just being socially awkward or unable to read social cues. It involves not being able to make any kind of small talk or make eye contact, of course, based on cultural acceptance. And it's not understanding what another person wants to change topics. It can also be that a person has good social skills, but they don't know the appropriate times or situations to use those social skills. So why do we need good social skills? We need social skills in order to maintain friendships, relationships with our family, professional relationships at work or at school, and having our needs met. As humans, we thrive on social interaction, and so those who have poor social skills aren't able to maintain any sort of relationship with anybody, and they end up being isolated and lonely. This is where social skills training comes in. So with social skills training, it can be tailored to meet an individual's priorities or preferences. So if one individual is really good at starting conversations, but is not able to succeed at a job interview, then social skills training can be tailored to fit that individual's needs and train them in that area that they struggle in. Everybody can benefit from social skills training, literally, everyone, but specifically those who are chronically shy, those who have an adjustment disorder, anyone who's going through marital and family conflicts, anybody with an anxiety disorder, ADHD, social phobia, and those with anger problems. Also, those who have any sort of alcohol or drug dependence, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, developmental disabilities, avoidant personality disorder, paranoid personality disorder, OCD, and schizotypal personality disorder. So what causes poor social skills? Because poor social skills can be seen in a variety of different disorders, the etiology and presentation can be dramatically different from person to person. Some possible causes of poor social skills include a history of reinforcement or a lack of reinforcement. So if you were to talk to somebody and they ignored you or were rude to you, you wouldn't want to continue having social interactions your environmental factors. So if you live in an environment where you don't have a lot of opportunities to have social interactions or all of your social interactions are with inappropriate people, such as those in a gang, you may not create good social skills. And then medical or biological factors, such as a disorder like autism. Social skills training can be provided individually or in group settings. Research has shown that group settings are more effective and efficient at providing training. Group settings provide an opportunity for participants to practice newly learned skills in an environment that closely, closely resembles their natural environment. And group settings also promote interaction with others. Group social skills training sessions can last from 45 to 90 minutes. Group sizes can range from 8 to 10 individuals. Sessions can occur weekly, but as frequently as daily if needed. Techniques during training include instruction, modeling, role playing, shaping, feedback, and reinforcement. There are 11 different social skills units included in the manual that we will be discussing today. Those units include creating positive interactions, getting to know others by starting conversations, making requests and getting more of what you want, expressing your feelings directly, getting out or how to say no, asserting your rights, telling it like it is, how others feel, the art of empathy, dealing with those in authority, staying out of trouble, responsible decision making or thinking about it, learning to negotiate in conflict resolution, and when you're in need, asking for help. Each unit begins with a scripted introduction and overview that includes telling the group what the skill is and why it is important. Discussion questions are specific to each unit. Non-examples are given during a role play of a current situation. The skill is modeled. Participants then practice the skill during the session and assignments are given at the end of each session. I hope it's still recording. Unit one is creating positive interactions. Unit one covers giving and receiving compliments. Throughout this unit, the group should realize that learning to give compliments can lead to positive interactions and may encourage the other person to give you a compliment. Learning to give you compliment, 
to give compliments will tell the other person what you like about them and why. And learning that if you give a person a compliment for doing something for you, they are more likely to do something else for you. First, you would begin by conducting a role play session where giving the compliment was not used appropriately and look at the situation according to seven questions. What was the setting? Who was present? What was said? Was it a compliment? Was it true? What was the compliment? And how did you feel afterward? Those seven questions are used throughout each unit at the beginning during the role playing session. They may be tweaked a little bit to fit that session, but those are the same seven questions used. After that, then the skill is modeled on both giving and receiving a compliment. This is done because it is often difficult for a lot of people to receive a compliment. This teaches the individual how to receive that compliment as well as to give a compliment to someone else. The skill is reviewed, making sure that the participant used the specific skills needed when they were giving and receiving a compliment. It is then practiced where each team selects from one of five situations where they practice giving and receiving compliments, and then one of two different assignments can be assigned depending on the person or the group. Unit two is about getting to know others and starting conversations. And so this unit will cover starting, maintaining, and ending conversations. Throughout this unit, the group should realize learning how to get to know others can help you meet new people and make new friends. Learning how to get to know others can help you feel comfortable in a variety of situations. Learning how to get to know others can help you get to know your friends better. Learning how to get to know others can help you get information from others that you may want or need. And learning how to get to know others can help you share things about yourself. Sorry. Learning how to get to know others can help you share things about yourself so that you can develop stronger friendships. The first thing that is done is a role play is conducted where the skill of starting a conversation was not used appropriately. Then the situation is looked at according to the following seven steps. What was the setting? Who was present? What was the statement used to start the conversation? How was the conversation maintained? How did the conversation end? What was the outcome of the conversation? And how did you feel afterwards? The skill is then modeled. Then during the model, they learn how to start, maintain, and end a conversation. It is then reviewed according to the specific skills needed when starting, maintaining, and ending a conversation. Then the groups will break up into, and choose from six situations and they will practice together starting, maintaining, and ending conversations. Once that is all over, extra assignments are then given out to the groups. Unit 3 is about making requests and getting more of what you want. So Unit 3, the group should realize learning to make requests will help you get more of what you want because you will be asking for it directly. Learning to make requests will help you feel more in control of your life because you will be taking charge of more things. And learning to make requests will help you get along better with others when you do it and apply in an appropriate manner. First, a role play is conducted in which they use the skill of making a request and look at the situation according to the following six questions. What was the setting? Who was present? What was the statement used to make the request? How was the request made in an appropriate and polite manner? What was the outcome of making the request? And how did you feel afterward? Once the role play is done, the skill is then modeled. And it is modeled by making a request in an polite and an appropriate manner. It is then reviewed according to the specific skills needed when making a request. The teams will then break up and choose from one of four situations and practice making a request with each other.
It is then reviewed according to the specific skills needed when making a request. The teams will then break up and choose from one of four situations and practice making a request with each other. At the end, extra assignments are given depending on the person and the group. Unit 4 is expressing your feelings directly. Unit 4 covers um, how to express yourself in an appropriate manner. Throughout this unit, the group should realize that learning to express your feelings can help you avoid situations that could lead to trouble, such as fights. Learning to express your feelings can help you feel more in control of your life. Learning to express your feelings can help you get along better with others. And learning to express your feelings will help other people listen to what you have to say. In the beginning, the group will conduct a role play session where you had to use the skill of expressing your feelings and look at the situation according to the following six questions. What was the setting? Who was present? What was the statement used to express your feelings? How did you express your feelings in a direct manner? What was the outcome of expressing your feelings? And how did you feel afterwards? After this, the skill will be modeled where you express your feelings in a direct manner. Then you will review this skill, making sure that you use the specific skills needed. Then teams will practice um, one of three situations. And then extra assignments are given to the group depending on what is needed and there are three different assignments that could be given. Unit 5 is getting out or how to say no. Throughout this unit, the group should realize learning to say no can help you stay out of trouble. Learning to say no will put you more in control of your life. Learning to say no can help you feel better about yourself because you won't do something that you don't want to. And learning to say no will help prevent others from taking advantage of you. In the beginning, the group will conduct a role play session where you had to use the skill of saying no and look at the situation according to the following six questions. What was the setting? Who was present? What was the statement that put pressure on the person? How did you say no? What was the outcome of your saying no? Did your friends react positively or negatively? And how did you feel afterward? What was the statement that put pressure on the person? How did you say no? What was the outcome of your saying no? Did your friends react positively or negatively? And how did you feel afterward? After that, the group will model saying no. They will review the skill, making sure they use the specific skills needed. And then the group will practice from one of three situations. And then three different assignments could be assigned. Unit 6 is about asserting your rights and telling it like it is. Throughout this unit, the group should realize learning to assert your rights can help you increase your own self-respect because you are standing up for your own rights. You can develop stronger self-confidence about yourself. It can also help you get more of what you want. By being direct and honest about what you want, you are more likely to be successful in getting what you want. Learning to assert your rights can help you feel more control over yourself and it can help you avoid situations where other people will treat you unfairly. In the beginning, a role play session is conducted in which they use the skill of standing up for your rights and look at the situation according to the following seven questions. What was the setting? Who was present? What was the statement you used to stand up for your rights? Was the statement assertive and not passive or aggressive? Was the statement a direct, honest, in an appropriate expression of your concerns and feelings? What was the outcome of standing up for your rights? And how did you feel afterwards? Once the role play is over, the skill is then modeled. After it's modeled, they review the skill and make sure that the specific skills needed for standing up for your rights were used. The teams will then break up and select from one of three situations and then practice, and practice asserting their rights. 
At the end, extra assignments are given, and there are three extra assignments that could be assigned depending on what the group needs. Unit 7 is about identifying how others feel in the art of empathy. Throughout this unit, the group should realize learning to use empathy can help you understand and get along with others better. Learning to use empathy can help others feel better because they know that someone understands them. Learning to use empathy can help you feel better because you help somebody by understanding them. And learning to use empathy can help you get to know another person better because you have shared feelings with them. At the beginning, a role play session is conducted where they use the skill of empathy and look at the situation according to the following six questions. What was the setting? Who was present? Did you listen carefully to what the other person said? What were the other person's feelings? Why was the person feeling this way? What empathetic statement was made to the other person? Once the skill is, is role, done in a role play, it is then modeled. Once the model is over, they review the skill and make sure that the specific skills needed when showing empathy were used. Then the teams will break up and, and choose from one of four situations and practice making or showing empathy. At the end, four different assignments could be assigned depending on the group. Unit 8 is dealing with those in authority or staying out of trouble. Throughout this unit, the group should realize that learning to deal with authority can help you get along better with adults. Learning to deal with authority can help you avoid problems caused by an inappropriate response. Learning to deal with authority will show others that you are mature and they may give you more responsibility in the future. Learning to deal with authority will increase the likelihood of more positive interactions. In the beginning of this session, the group will conduct a role play session where someone had to use the skill of dealing with authority and look at the situation according to the following six questions. What was the setting? Who was present? How did you listen to the person in authority? Did you apologize to the person if necessary? Did you ask for suggestions if appropriate? And how did you feel afterward? After the role play is done, the skill of dealing with authority is modeled. Then it is reviewed to make sure that the participants use the specific skills needed when dealing with authority. After that, the group will break up into teams where they select from one of three situations to practice dealing with authority. In the, at the end of the session, um, extra assignments are given where they will record any situation where they have to encounter authority during the next week. Unit 9 is responsible decision making, thinking about it. Throughout this unit, the group should realize that learning to make decisions can help you make better, more effective decisions. Learning to make decisions can help you think about situations and choices more carefully without jumping to the first idea that comes up. Learning to make decisions can help you prepare for future decisions that will be difficult, like what job or career to get. And learning to make decisions can help you feel better about the choices you do make because you will have carefully thought about them. At the beginning of this session, the group will conduct a role play session where you had to use the skill of making a decision and look at the situation according to the following four questions. What was the setting? Who, if anybody, was present? What process did you use to make the decision? Did you generate alternative choices? Describe the positive and negative outcomes of each choice? Choose one or a combination of choices and act on the decision? And how did you feel afterward? After the role play, the group will model the session where they go through the thinking process when make a making a decision. Then the skill is reviewed to make sure the participants use the specific skills needed when making a decision. The group will break up into teams where they will select from one of four situations and practice making a decision. Three different assignments could be assigned at the end of the session depending on the person or group.
Unit 10 is learning to negotiate and all about conflict re resolution. So throughout this unit, the group should realize learning to negotiate can help you get along better with other people since you can solve conflicts. Learning to negotiate can help you understand other people better since you have to actually listen to the other person's viewpoint. Learning to negotiate can help you get more of what you want in a situation since you can reach a compromise with the other person and learning to negotiate can help you earn the respect of the other person or keep your friendships with the other person since you are working together to solve the problem. Beginning, a role play session is conducted in which you had to use the skill of negotiation and look at the situation according to the following seven questions. What was the setting? Who was present? What was the statement used to begin the negotiation? Did you offer an alternative solution? Was an alter alternative solution offered by the other person? Did both people try to reach a compromise? Was a compromise accepted or did both people agree that although they tried to compromise, no clear solution is available at this time? Once the role play is over, the skill is then modeled Once the model is over, the skill is then reviewed and to make sure that the specific skills needed when negotiating were used. The teams will then break up and choose from one of three situations and practice negotiating. At the end, four different assignments could be assigned depending on the group. The last unit is when you're in need asking for help. Throughout this unit, the group should realize Learning to ask for help can assist you in dealing with serious problems that may be too much for you to handle. Learning to ask for help can assist you in feeling better about yourself. Learning to ask for help can assist you in feeling more in control of your circumstances. And learning to ask for help will lead to respect from others because you asked for help when you needed it. A role play session is conducted in the beginning where they had to ask for help and look at the situation according to the following seven questions. What was the setting? Why was there a need to ask for help? What kinds of help were needed? Who were some people you could see to get help? Who should, see, who should you see to get help? How did you describe your problem to the person helping you? And how did you feel afterwards? The skill is then modeled and reviewed to make sure that the specific skills needed when asking for help were used. The teams will then break up and choose from one of four situations and practice asking for help. At the end, three different assignments could be assigned depending on the person in the group. Now after Unit 11, the manual doesn't specifically say if there is a follow-up session that comes afterwards, but that could be up to the leader's discretion. I could see there being sort of a hoorah, we have social skills now kind of party at the end. We hope you enjoyed our video and found it useful in either administering a social skills training or just improving your own social skills. If you have any questions or need some more information about the training, our manual reference is provided at the end of the video.